Hey guys, Excalibur here, and I'm bringing you part 5 of the flight animation blueprint tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial, we are going to be taking our animations that we created and putting them together into a blend space uh, for the sprint mechanic to work. So, let me just open up our tutorial map, and we'll get right into it. So, what we need to first do is navigate to our AFL BP folder, where all of our animations and our animation blueprints located and here we're going to right click animation and we're going to create a new blend space remember select the mannequin that we are using and i'm just going to call this afl supersonic movement all right open it up so inside of our Asset details. All right. Under our asset details, we need to set up our axis settings. So for the horizontal, we are going to be naming it to the yaw. Our minimum will set to negative five, our maximum to five, and we want 16 grid divisions. For the vertical, we're going to do pitch. And our minimum, we want to do negative 90 and 90 for the maximum. And for the grid divisions, 16 as well. So what this is doing is for our yaw, which is our the horizontal axis, this is for turning left and right. Uh, we will be, we can tweak this later depending on um, how the animations flow together. But for now... I set it to a negative five and a five so it can actually play the animations properly. So we can actually see it when we sprint. All right, so go into our asset browser and we need to search for these animations that we just created. So we'll do, just type in AFL supersonic. And we should have all of our supersonic animations that we have created. So first one we want to set up in the direct center is our AFL supersonic forward idle. Right there, AFL supersonic FWD idle. You want to find the, go from pitch all the way over to yaw. Make sure that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight up. So that's right in the middle. All right. To the left of that, one space over to the left is our left idle and one space over to the right is our right idle so now when you shift and drag around you'll notice that the character will move back and forth the next one we have our left extreme so along that same line all the way to the end so now when a character goes to the left and if they move the mouse dramatically to the left the character will fly on their side and the way the camera lag is set up you'll notice that it actually feels like the camera has to catch up uh, the character has to catch up to the, how the camera is moving and the same with the right extreme along that same axis all right so now we need to set up our yaw our basic yaws we need to find the ascend idle animation. So now if our character flies up into a 90 degree angle, our character will actually create uh, go into the proper orientation. Now let me, we wanna make sure we have the flying down. I think this is, here. Okay. So we have our flying down and our flying up. Put those two squares away from the forward idle. So now when you fly up slightly, your character will begin to gradually incline. And then when you move the camera all the way to a 90 degree angle, your character orients himself that way. We want to make sure we have our 
flying down. Yes, we do. It's called descend. All right. So search descend. And we're going to take that and put it all the way down at the bottom. So now we have our we have our um, basic orientations. What we still need to do is set up the if the character is looking upwards and they move the mouse to the right, the character will turn slightly, which that is uh, easy. We have already animation set up. We take the left down extreme, put it in the lower left hand corner. So now. When our character is flying down and we move to the left, the character rotates to the left. Same with right down extreme. Now, character moves in the proper directions. We need to do left up extreme and right up extreme. All right. So now, if you shift and drag around, our character moves in all the directions that are needed for when the camera is moving and it should be pretty should be pretty uh, seamless transitions all right that's wrong make sure yeah make sure you always check to see the animations if you if you can notice here the right extreme was replaced with the right up extreme so that's simple just take this drag and drop it into the same spot there all right, so save it, close out. That is all we need for the blend space. Now we need to adjust the character blueprint. So actually, I'm going to open up the animation blueprint. We're going to need that later after we set up our character blueprint. So back out of this, go to the blueprint folder, AFL, uh, player blueprint. And we're going to find some open space to set up our sprinting function. If you remember earlier, we should have set up the input. I'm just going to double check. Yep, sprint and supersonic. So I'm going to find that action event. I'm going to just go down here. So we need to take our Super, is supersonic to set it. And we're going to set this to true when we press the input action of sprinting. So when, we're, when we are pressing the shift key, our character will start sprinting. However, uh, we only want the character to sprint and the animations to play if the character is actually moving. So to do that, we're going to find a branch and the condition is flight pressed so when flight is pressed our character will be able to go into supersonic I'm sorry we want this to be on we want the character to only to go into supersonic animations if they are in flight we will be setting up after um, when the character is moving we want to make sure we play the animations for when they're moving, and if he is not moving, we want to make sure that when we press the sprint key, he won't move. He won't go into a sprinting animation loop. So from here, we bring in our character movement, and off of this, uh, we're going to set our max fly speed. So when we are sprinting, our max fly speed I set to about three thousand. Uh, you can tweak this to however you want once you get a feel of how fast the character is moving. And then drag it off again from the character movement. And we're going to set this back to our original fly speed, which is 400. So take the set is supersonic. Set it to false. So when we release sprint, supersonic is not, mo is not true anymore. And if it's not true, we want to set our max fly speed back to normal. Sprint. Slash. You can use this same technique for any other type of sprinting. Um, if you have other uh, variables for sprinting, such as stamina, you, can, you would be able to put that in here 
as well. We're not gonna be going over that in this tutorial. All right, so we've got our sprinting in the character blueprint set up. Now it's time to add in the animations for the animation blueprint so our character can actually play the animations while they're sprinting. So navigate to the event graph. We need to create a new Boolean variable called is accelerating. So now this is what I was explaining before. We want the animations only to play if our character is moving. If the character is not moving and we press shift, the character will not do anything. So first create a new sequence and then off of the cast to AFL player blueprint, we want to find character movement. We want to get our character movement and we want to get current acceleration and from here we want the vector length and if this vector length is at any time greater than zero we are going to set is accelerating and then connect that to the sequence so anytime our character anytime the acceleration is greater than zero the vector length uh, is accelerating will be set to true which means our character is moving and we will be able to use this as the character accelerating we'll be able to use this for when we want to play our sprinting animations so navigate to the locomotion the animation graph and open up the locomotion state machine go to locomotion state flight movement and here's where we're going to be setting up our sprinting animations so we need to drag onto here afl so we're typing afl super sonic and we want to find our movement We also want to find start and stop. So we'll, we'll have an adaptive start and stop for each one. And to connect these from the AFL flight movement 2D, connect to supersonic start. From supersonic start, connect to AFL supersonic movement. From AFL supersonic movement to, to AFL supersonic stop. And then from stop back to the 2D movement also, from the supersonic movement, do another arrow back to flight movement 2D. This is going to be for when our character is in supersonic and we let go of shift but are still moving, our character will um, transition back to the movement animations. So now you'll see you'll have, if you compile, you'll have a bunch of these errors, the compiler errors. That's just because we don't have any can enter transitions so inside of the first one from t the flight movement to the start we want to do if our character is accelerating Uh, I think I forgot. Yep, I did forget. We need to know when our character is sprinting from the character blueprint. So that's that's really simple. So from the cast to AFL player blueprint, get get is supersonic. We're gonna need to create a new variable. Just call that supersonic. And if the is supersonic set to true, we will also set is superson is the supersonic question mark to true. And just bundle that in with the is accelerating. Now, 
So when, our, when we press shift in the player blueprint, that's basically telling us, okay, we are going, we're accelerating. We want to find out if we're accelerating, but we also want to make sure that the shift key is pressed. And we want to get that. Connect those two together. So if our character is accelerating and we are pressing the shift key, then we can enter the transition of the supersonic start. In this next connection from the start to the supersonic movement, we want to get, get time remaining. And if it is less than 0.2, we go into our supersonic movement. So over here we already have the pitch and the yaw that we've made before for our looking direction. From the supersonic movement to the stop, we just need is if the character is accelerating, is not. So if our character is not accelerating, anymore, this, this means if our character, if we let go of all the keys at the same time, our character will go into the stopping animation, which you will see uh, after it's all set up. And then from the stop to the 2D movement, get time remaining. Again, less than 0.2. And then the final one, This is just as if supersonic is not. So this is when our character is moving. So what we have is if our character is moving and we press shift uh, while flying, our character will enter the supersonic state. From here, we have two different types of stopping from supersonic movement. We have an actual stop if all the keys are released our character will go into a stop animation and stop abruptly. If not, our character will not play this animation. If we just release the shift key and are still moving, our character will then go from movement to, from supersonic to regular movement. So I'll show you how that looks. So we're in flight, we're moving. First thing I'll show you, if I press shift, our character will not move. But now if our character's moving, now we go into our supersonic. Again, there are still some bugs that we have to work out, such as the uh, turning. So if you move the mouse enough, you'll see that he um, abruptly changes. However, the animations look kind of wonky and a little off. So in the next tutorial, uh, that I have coming, we will be going through some bug fixes and quality of life. So leave a like, comment on anything you want to see. You can always email me with any suggestions. I'm always open to any ideas that you guys have.